Have you ever wondered if science has its own limitations? Is it possible that science as we know it is based on dogmatic assumptions? These are the questions we must ask ourselves as we embark on a journey to understand the current state of science and its potential limitations. Science, the epitome of human curiosity and the quest for knowledge, has undoubtedly transformed our world. It has given us insights into the nature of the universe, the workings of our bodies and the complexities of our minds. However, like any human endeavour, science is not without its limitations. It is governed by a set of assumptions, a framework within which it operates. These assumptions, often unspoken and unquestioned, form the bedrock of what is known as the science delusion. The science delusion is not a critique of science itself, but rather a critique of the dogmatic assumptions that underpin it. It's the belief that science has already figured out the nature of reality, leaving only the details to be filled in. It's the conviction that everything in the universe, from the tiniest particle to the grandest galaxy, can be explained by the laws of physics and chemistry. It's the presumption that life and mind are mere byproducts of matter, that the constants of nature are fixed and immutable, and that the total amount of matter and energy is always the same. But what if these assumptions are unfounded? What if they are not supported by empirical evidence or logical reasoning? What if they are stifling the very creativity, curiosity and innovation that are the lifeblood of science? Enter Rupert Sheldrake, a renowned scientist who has dared to challenge these dogmas. Sheldrake believes that these assumptions are not only limiting the scope and potential of scientific inquiry, but are also preventing us from exploring new possibilities and perspectives. He has identified ten core dogmas of the science delusion, each one a pillar of the conventional scientific worldview. Rupert Sheldrake, a renowned scientist, has identified ten core dogmas of the science delusion. Let's delve into these dogmas and their counter-arguments. Our understanding of the universe and our place in it may never be the same again. The first dogma states that nature is mechanical and everything can be explained by the laws of physics and chemistry. But is it so? Rupert Sheldrake, in his enlightening book, The Science Delusion, proposes a counter-argument. He suggests that nature is not merely a vast, unfeeling machine, rather it's a living entity, teeming with vitality and with an intrinsic interconnectedness. Imagine for a moment a world where everything is interdependent. The rustling leaves, the roaring rivers, the soaring birds, even the silent rocks, all are part of a grand interconnected dance of existence. This perspective challenges the mechanistic view of nature. It suggests that the laws of physics and chemistry, while important, are not the be-all and end-all of our understanding. This vibrant, interconnected view of nature also has profound implications for how we conduct scientific inquiry. It opens up new possibilities, new questions and new avenues for exploration. So, the first dogma can be challenged by considering nature as a live entity, rather than a mechanical one. The second dogma suggests that matter is unconscious, and life and mind are emergent properties of complex systems. This dogma essentially states that consciousness and life are products of complex interactions within physical systems, and that matter itself is devoid of consciousness. Rupert Sheldrake challenges this belief, presenting a compelling counter-argument. He proposes that matter is animated by a vital principle. This principle, often overlooked, infuses life and consciousness into matter, making them inherent properties of all systems, not just the complex ones. This perspective invites us to consider that consciousness is not merely an emergent property, but a fundamental characteristic of matter, woven into the fabric of our universe. This implies that life and mind are not just byproducts of complexity, but are integral to the very nature of existence. This counters the second dogma by suggesting that life and mind are not just emergent properties, but inherent to all systems. Having explored all ten dogmas and their counter-arguments, what are the implications of Sheldrake's arguments? Sheldrake's framework, as we've discussed, is a radical departure from the conventional scientific worldview. The implications of accepting his arguments are far-reaching, both for the future of scientific inquiry and our understanding of reality itself. 
Take, for example, the notion that nature is alive and everything is interconnected and interdependent. This implies a paradigm shift from viewing the world as a machine to seeing it as a complex living organism. It suggests that we must move beyond reductionism, the idea that complex systems can be understood solely by breaking them down into their components, to a more holistic, integrative approach. If we consider the dogma that the mind is inside the head and its counter-argument that the mind extends beyond the head, the implications for neuroscience and psychology are profound. This could open new avenues of research into consciousness, perception and cognition, and offer fresh insights into mental health and well-being. Similarly, the argument that unexplained phenomena such as telepathy and precognition are natural, and psychic abilities are latent in everyone, challenges the boundaries of what we consider possible and impossible. It invites us to expand our understanding of human potential and explore the uncharted territories of our minds. The contention that science is influenced by cultural and personal values and scientific progress is contingent and unpredictable underscores the importance of reflexivity and critical thinking in science. It calls for a more humble, open-minded approach to scientific practice, recognizing that science is a human endeavor shaped by our beliefs, biases and values. Sheldrake's argument suggests that if we free ourselves from the shackles of dogmatic assumptions, science can become a more creative, dynamic and inclusive enterprise. It could lead us to a deeper, richer understanding of the universe and our place within it. It could help us cultivate a sense of wonder, awe and reverence for the mystery and beauty of existence. Sheldrake's arguments invite us to question the dogmas of the science delusion and to explore the possibilities of a more expansive and inclusive science. In summary, Sheldrake challenges the dominant worldview of modern science, arguing for a more holistic and dynamic view of reality. He takes a bold stand against ten core dogmas that have long been seen as the pillars of scientific understanding. These dogmas, ranging from the belief that nature is mechanical to the assertion that memories are erased at death, have formed the foundation of our scientific inquiry. However, Sheldrake argues that these dogmas are not supported by empirical evidence or logical reasoning. Instead, they are limiting the scope and potential of scientific exploration, stifling creativity, curiosity and innovation. He suggests that these dogmas should be questioned, not blindly accepted, and that science should be a method of inquiry, not a belief system. In opposition to these dogmas, Sheldrake proposes a more expansive view of reality. He suggests that nature is alive and interconnected, that matter is animated by a vital principle and that the constants and laws of nature are evolving. He argues that consciousness extends beyond the brain, that memories survive beyond death, and that unexplained phenomena such as telepathy and precognition are natural. This shift in perspective has profound implications for how we understand and interact with the world around us. It invites us to see nature as creative and responsive to recognize the inherent value and meaning in nature, and to appreciate the interplay between genes, environment and developmental factors in biological inheritance. Furthermore, Sheldrake's arguments challenge the notion that mechanistic medicine is the only effective approach, suggesting that holistic medicine and alternative therapies can be beneficial. He also emphasizes that science is influenced by cultural and personal values and that scientific progress is contingent and unpredictable. The science delusion invites us to rethink our views on what is possible, giving us new hope for the world. It's a call to redefine the boundaries of science and to embrace the unknown with curiosity and wonder.